as usual. Icarus one of the first through. Uh, with Origin Series about to end, that feeding frenzy on the coaching roller coaster will probably resume. Most likely with coaches Walters and Marshall, the uh, candidates, especially around the Broncos and Tigers, if they drop another round. Coaching in the NRL is a very hard road to hoe when you don't get mates' rates from the media contingent. What do you fellows think? Yep, it's tough for Kevy at the moment. You, well, you feel uh, for him because he's a mate of all of us. Well, but, he's uh, a great mate of all of ours. But um, the reality is, Paddy, I mean, this is a team that played in the grand final last year with, yeah. within a whisker, absolute whisker of winning the competition, uh, to sitting 13th at the moment. I mean, it's unacceptable. I've said it openly. The Broncos were uh, were a, a club that has been built on success since 1988. They don't stand for, uh, for teams that aren't successful. Mm. And to go within a grand final and to sit now uh, – 13th in the competition yeah. is not where they need to be. Six straight losses. Six straight losses in uh, over the last six weeks is uh, making it very difficult. So uh, the pressure just continually mounts, as you mentioned, uh, with the uh, decider on mm. Wednesday. It takes a little bit of heat or a little bit of focus off the Broncos, but that'll come squarely back on uh, you know, just after the game. But uh, breaking news, as we can just speak now, Paddy, there has been a, a goal go to Spain in the Euros just – Minutes into the second half. So uh, Spain have now gone 1-0 up against England in the Euro final. Jacko tells me it's Nico Williams. Nico Sounds Williams. like a pong. It, well, it does. <laughs> <laughs> I a wouldn't have said 20-year-old. He's just scored the first goal for Spain. They're one up. Uh, and, yeah, they are going off the Spanish fans, as you can imagine. We'll keep you up to date with that. Hey, listen, as we return to the Bronx just quickly, uh, you can see, you, I think you were on Fox Sports at the time, mm. and the ca- the Fox Sports cameras in the dressing room picked it up and giving them a spray. He was giving them a spray, Kevy. And then at the press conference, you know, the, the dejection just, you know, oozed through his voice. The thing that annoys me, and I don't, I don't bother about St George, but I just bother about us. I just, I just know we're so much a better team than, than what we're doing. You know, I feel sorry. Uh, I don't feel sorry. I'm just disappointed that that's that's what we throw up, and I'm disappointed, you know, myself as a coach that that's what that's what's being presented. You know, consistently, that's not good enough, and you know that that rests on me. So. That's why, yeah. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, mate, that first 50 minutes was possibly one of the worst I've seen. Yeah, and Uh, and that's the alarming thing, isn't uh, it? I mean, coming into that game, they'd lost five in a row. There was huge emphasis on the Broncos and what they needed to turn up with uh, back at home. And you just touched on it. 50 minutes of that game, they were well and uh, truly absolutely dominated. I mean, 22 points to six at half time. South, uh, South, uh, St. The, George. St. George were, were missing their two best players, obviously, Zach Lomax and also Ben Hunt. Yes, yeah. the Broncos were missing some too, but you would get, you would suggest going into it they were evenly pegged. Yeah. So they were down 6-1 at the penalties at half time, and, and as a Broncos fan, you couldn't even blow up about that. No, that's... Because they yes. were all deserved. Uh, you know, there were forward passes, drop balls, missed tackles, stags, sin bid. And, I mean, we've got that incident here. I know he came back to play brilliantly after that, mm. but, you know, he was gone for 10 minutes. Run, and he goes straight through, then gets it on the mask. He slows, looming up. Man coming across. Great tackle from Stags. Maskey holding on. Last. Oh, now that's sin bid. Well, if he's not square, it's a bin. And, and sin bid. We're not square. We're not square. And you're going to break it down. It did look pretty obvious, that one. We saw it last night with Abby Coruscant. I would suggest the Coruscant one was a little more contentious than this. Yeah, I agree. I reckon Coruscant was square, but that's about you know, yeah, I mean, a conversation for another Staggs day. Tony Staggs was, he was, he was in his hip pocket. He was, you know, it was a dumb play. Put yeah. his team under enormous amounts of pressure. But, I, I mean, again, I go back. It was 22 points to six at half time. The power game that we'd seen from uh, the Dragons was just dead set obliterating what Brisbane had. I mean, 588 run metres is what Brisbane had in the first half. Mm. plays a thousand and five. And we're not talking I say it in, in respect to, to the Dragons, but they just had a desire and an intent and everything about what they were after suggested they wanted to go on and win the game. The, yeah. the Broncos just weren't prepa- prepared to pay the price. Yeah, and was, they just yeah, they just kept making mistakes. Just the the fundamental errors, you know, simple errors that uh you know, just can't keep doing that. Well, we paid a price again tonight, so. Mm. And what does Kevy do now? I mean, 
we know that he's got a, a large origin contingent mm. that hopefully will be available for next week. But there's no guarantee on that. They've got to get through Wednesday night yet. Yeah, they they do. Uh, and again, I'll go back a couple of weeks to the game over there in New Zealand where Kevy had opted to rest them. I, I think circumstantially you need to come up and you need to have a bit of... You need to be able to move with the time. And the yeah. Broncos were desperate at that point and they opted to rest uh, those stars and ultimately that was another loss for them. So uh, providing they get through uninjured, they have to play. There's no two ways about it. Don't worry yeah. about science and don't worry about what happens after that. They have to play. I'm, I'm, I know Kevy is rolling out the company line and going, well, we'll see what how they pull up and the science, etc. cetera. Uh, look, their season is on... Life support. Yeah, six, well and truly. Six out of the last seven they have to win. And they got some big uh, big teams coming up. So uh, it's a very interesting watch at the moment. Mm. Okay, uh, Brett's joined us from Surface Paradise. So sad to hear the passing of Mike Coleman. And, and it was. And, and if, if you get a chance to read Crash's tribute, uh, it was just beautiful. They were great mates and, and both great journos. But I listened to Kevin Walters' aftermatch press conference. The journo said Blake Moser made a big difference to the team from dummy half, which he did. And Kevy snorted back, Billy played well as well. That wasn't the question. Uh, that looked bad. Uh, yeah, look, Kevy's, yeah, Kevy's under the pump at the moment. There's, there's no doubt about that. And we feel for this a team that made and probably should have won the grand final. Yeah, yeah, you're spot on. I mean, it, again, it's the Broncos. We're, like, we're, we're not dealing with just some team that it just sort of bumbles around, you know, the bottom of the eight. And, you know, we sort of just discuss every now and This is the Brisbane Broncos. Played in a grand final. They're sitting equal amount of wins as South Sydney and also the Titans. Mm. And if you think of where they those two teams have been over the last eighteen months, to put the Broncos in the same sort of, you mm. know, it's it's yeah, it's there's huge pressure. Yep, Stu from Jim Boomer. Morning, gents. I can confirm the Bronx season is over. No, write them off yet, Stu. Unfortunately, Kevy is under the pump. He's looking at making the, the finals once in four years. That's not good enough. We've capitulated in two of those seasons, plus a grand final. Is this mentally weak from the Bronx? Uh, um, well, yes. Yeah. I mean, the resilience that we've seen from the Brisbane Broncos uh, when the times get really tough it, it is an issue. And it's an issue because, look... Uh, Yes, they've had injuries. Yes, they've had suspensions, etc. But you know, again, I go back the the best teams in the competition, the Melbourne Storm and also the Penrith Panthers, have had all of those. They've had players playing in positions that you just go, well, first and foremost, who is this player? And secondly, what they're not that position, and they just find a way to get it done. But I go back the training habits for everyone, and it doesn't matter what sport you're in, is critical. If mm. your training habits uh, epitomise the way you play, that's how you train. So at the moment, if, if you went and watched Melbourne play, uh, train and you went and watched Penrith train, I reckon they're at the top echelon of training uh, and, and to a standard that no matter what is happening, any player can uphold. Yeah, but we keep hearing they're training well. It's it's a line that we get trotted out every week, isn't it? We're, pr- we're training okay. And yet to produce that first 50 minutes the other night mm. was so disappointing when it was a... Um, a a game that mattered so much to the club. I mean, the the Dragons' left edge just tore them apart. I tell you who'd be the happiest from the weekend? A couple of coaches, Flanagan and Desi, down the coast. Because Fafita doesn't make the origin side, mm. he tears them apart. And, and Jaden Sewer yeah, doesn't get dropped from the origin, and he tears them apart. Yeah, you spot on a couple of real big statements, obviously, from mainly Sewer, because uh, he has been a part of the, the origin first two games. But um, Crash Craddock, he... You know, his opening paragraph in today's paper, if you get a chance, was was terrific. He said, the Broncos should have a fine system for the next player who says, after a loss, the thing is, we are training really well. Really? After six losses in a row, it must be a relief for fans to know that the team is training so well. Imagine the score lines if they were training badly. Mm. Six in a row. Fantastic. I'll tell you who's, who's going uh, even worse. The Tigers, 58-6 oh, of the Sharks. You gotta, we've got to play this from Adam Dewey because you, the, the frustration within the Tigers camp and their coaching panel is just palpable. How do you sum that one up? Yes. Um, embarrassing, disappointing. Um, yeah, we just, from the, from the get-go, we didn't bring any energy, any enthusiasm. We were willing to tackle hard enough, hard enough, and we were willing, willing to run hard enough. And um, from everyone, from me individually, from the whole team, all seven of us. Um, you know, honestly, it's that's embarrassing. Well, Benji sort of echoed. Benji was oh, scathing in the in the post match. 
But when you take the field, you've got to choose the right attitude, um, how hard you want to tackle and how hard you want to run. And they ran harder and tackled harder than us and had way more energy than us. It, it, it's nearly got to a point, and, and uh, you know, to, for the Tigers fans out there, where you just you, you just get sick of talking about them right. because, like again, we're talking about them, and, and they're they're hot favourites to get the wooden spoon. That'll be three years in a row. They have won uh, four games two years ago, mm. four games last year to sit where they are at the moment. It, it's uh, it, it's very disappointing for a club that has so much passionate supporters. Uh, to continually dish up what they dish up was, uh, again, 50-something points at points bet Stadium was uh, unacceptable. Yeah, a stack of texts coming through. Uh, we'd love to hear from you this morning. 13, 13, 55, that's our Suncorp open line. Text us on 0467 736 736. Uh, Oscar, he's been up and about. Kevin Walters seems to be without his support network. Adam Reynolds out injured. Yes, he was sitting up uh, behind him in the box. Assistant coaches uh, John Cartwright and Matty Ballon, both in origin camp. Doesn't make it easy. You've got, you know, four of your gun players in origin camp as mm. well in, in respective camps. Plus, they've got a stack of injuries. But, you know, the, I think the fans are entitled to expect more than we got in the first 50 minutes the other night. Well, that's spot on. And again, from an ex-player, from an ex-captain, and I bleed Bronco colours, as mm. you know, Paddy. It, it, you can't just say that we've had injuries and suspensions and that's okay. It's not okay. Mm. It, like it's never been okay. Don't accept that mediocrity in the sense that well, you know, this is a grand final team last mm. year, and I go back, like you talk about Melbourne, Grant Anderson and and Alec McDonald and these sorts of players. Who are they? Mm. They find a way. They're sitting four points clear at the top of the table. Still no Cameron Munster. Haven't played with Pappenhausen for most parts of the year. Harry Grant's been out. Yeah. They just find a way. It's the it goes back to what happens Monday to Friday in the inner sanctum of a club. Okay.